booktube friends this is angel from the elegant thread welcome back long time no see almost so it's been i don't know a couple of weeks wow i'm actually making a video within a couple of weeks not a couple of months what is happening with the world well since everything is like molding into one big time continuum um i don't know if it's two weeks or two months or two days who knows uh so okay the glasses getting a lot of glare so I'll take those off. Um, I'll just be squinting at everything when I go to when I go to read. So you will be hearing dear old Stony squeaking in the background. That's his usual. He uh, provides the theme music, the squeaky theme music for the elegant thread. Today this is a all the haul, y'all. That's I got back from my trip, gone what almost three months, and a little pile of goodies had accumulated in my workshop. So I thought, you know what? I'll share it with you and you'll see it for the first time, just like I'm gonna see it for the first time and we can oogle and ogle uh, together. Squeaky. Uh, and um, if you're stitching, get a cup of coffee, have a seat, gin and tonic, whatever, you know, and um, snuggle in for the long winter's nap. Okay, where should we start? Before we go into haul, let me just show you where I am with regard to whips. So I actually been stitching just a little bit, a modicum of stitching, if you will. And of course, me being the monogamous stitcher that I am, I go from one really big long project to another really big long project with small little tiny projects in between to give me a little bit of a sense of accomplishment and keep me from giving up this sport altogether. So Autumn Quaker, that's what I've been working on because I love Rosewood Manor. Anything Karen Kluba does cannot be wrong because it's fantastic. So, uh, Autumn Quaker, I started this uh, a long, a long time ago. I should pull out my booklet that tells me what I'm stitching on. I have that little booklet I've been writing in. I have something for you later. Um, but I started this back with uh, the Sunshine Stitchers. We're doing a stitch along, and I don't know, maybe a year ago. I, I don't know here. Everyone else has finished, moved on to Winter Quaker, and now they're down the road doing something else. But here is mine. Let me put this behind it so you, maybe you can see it. This is where I am with my Autumn Quaker. So if you're looking at the page, this is about halfway down. Here, this is about halfway. So I'm almost halfway. What? That's fantastic. Let's, let's, let's test. Let's see. Yeah, you can put it right there. Let's see where we are. Okay. Let's see if we're really halfway. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, there, right there, and right there. So, this, it calls for, don't look, do not freeze that frame and look at any of those charts. So, um, this called for, I believe, look, I can look through here. Hi, how you doing? Um, 28 count, I'm doing it on 46 count, and I'm separating the Valdani into a single strand, and it's coming out great. Do not look too close. Mm, look from way back here because I've had a few mistakes. Which is what I do, right? So I don't know. I pick it up. I work on it a little bit. I put it back down and I can't count for stuff, right? I do have a master's in aerospace science and you can't count to 10. So I don't know. I don't know. But there it is. Uh, <laughs> a few of things might be over. I not a, not a whole stitch either. It's never a whole stitch, is it? No, no. Oh, no, my friend. It's always one strand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So your X is kind of like, you know, just ever so slightly off, but not really off all the way. Not enough to really get you and make it rip it out. And the road I'm talking about is right here. This little fellow here is one half, one thread off somewhere and now he's uh, you know what I'm gonna squeak in squish in whatever I can I can't even get this flower in over here whatever it's mine it's my art right this is mine so I'm gonna make that work you know I might just leave his little puppy guys off I might change them I might do something I don't know <laughs> mm -hmm. do I have things on my teeth okay listen if I have lipstick on my teeth you need to like text me or call me or, like immediately. I know it's after the fact, but nonetheless, so I can pull this thing down. Or you can just laugh, not say anything. It's like your friend that has a booger and you don't say anything at all. Just, or just laugh. 
I'm okay with that too. As long as I don't know, it doesn't hurt me. Okay, so that was uh, <laughs> the first thing I've been working on. Yeah, that was a tangent. And then I thought, you know, even I sometimes get tired of monogamy. I must admit. <laughs> So I had a new start. Do you know what this is? Do you know what this is, my friends? I've mentioned it before. This is from Saju. So um, that, this is exactly what I'm stitching. It's kind of weird. I made a bag out of the out of the fabric, and uh, you know, there's not really a picture. There is a picture. Yeah, they give a picture. Here it is. You know, it's the picture, the chart on this side, but the picture. So this is what it looks like. And um, when I saw it, I saw it at market last year. I bought this at Nashville, and it was a pillow, and it was adorable. So you know, it's one of those you, one of those things where you, the charts like meh, and then you see the finished product. It's just this way with everything. You see the finished product, and you're like, oh my god, that is so awesome! I totally have to have it. Yeah, here it is. So there's my little itty bitty wincy start, itsy bitsy, like itsy bitsy spider. Boing. Here's my little start. This is with um, Saju cotton floss on a 12 count linen, two strands over two. And let me tell you, after doing the 46 count, one strand on the Autumn Quaker, this is this is like butter, right? So <laughs> so simple. But it has a ton of little little back stitching. You can see all the definition is done with um, with back stitching. So that right there is oops 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 on ooh, like on this thing it would be uh this flower here and when i'm done stitching it it's gonna look just like this and it's gonna be exactly this size <laughs> and it'll be a pillow kind of cool huh so it came in a kit and the kit has this is the backing fabric for the pillow Mito mosquito and I put all of the, like my little Saju bag that I made to go with it. And it has all of the, the Saju cotton threads in it. So they're all inside here. Da, da, da. So normally I use their silk products and, um, but now I'm using the, the cotton in it and it works really great. It's, it's fun, you know, it's a, it's a fun little stitch. So, new start. Call it my my uh, my election start to get over the stress of the of the whole thing. So, um, although we will never be able to stress the whole thing. There we go. In my bag, in my massage you bag. How matchy matchy is that? But ah, that's me. Okay, those are my whips. Let's move on. Whip, 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 whip. Let's move on. To haul. Let's start with something that I, uh, let's start with the floss that I received. So I was in a floss club, and I'm not sure if these are from the floss clubs or if these are just the, the week's people sending me um, the upgrade updates to their products. So here are all the wonderful flosses that we're waiting. And these are all week's Dye Works flosses. And oh, they're wonderful. They are absolutely wonderful. I'm particularly fond, I had to combine a few, they didn't all come together like this. So this wonderful little pink collection, not a fan of pink, but if you had to have pink, that's a nice collection. And this, this right here, this collection, maybe this is like their fall collection or something. Oh, oh, those colors are nice. Uh, and the blue. Look at the blues. Okay. I like those a lot. Okay, those are my favorite. Those are my new favorites. These are like their springy blues, but that that right there, I could do a whole sample just in that. Okay, it's lovely. And then they had uh, wonderful reds. You can never have too much red floss in your life because everybody needs, it's the law to be doing a red sampler. Yes. So, and then some yellow. Yellow's a hard one. Yellow's a hard one. Uh, a lot of people mm -mm, just don't like yellow, and you know, for good reason, because it's yellow. But uh, it's a really, it's a really wonderful accent color, I think, yellow. Because sometimes it's like, 
yellow. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's kind of a cream antique kind of kind of color. So um, as a designer, I think those are really fantastic. So I was going through my haul in my haul bin. I guess I have a haul bin now. Things that appear in the mail and just go into the bin. And this was in there. This might have come from somewhere with something. I don't know yet, but it appears to be a ruler. It has some cross stitch. You can cross stitch on the ruler. I don't know where this came from, <laughs> but here it is, a ruler that I'm gonna cross stitch on, I guess. Sure. Um, I didn't take anything out of the package. Sorry, this time you're just getting a quick -o. So here we go. Uh, this is from the Quaint Country Ladies, I believe is what it's called, or something, friends. Uh, yeah, Quaint Country Ladies from Dying to Stitch in Virginia Beach, Pineberry Lane. Um, I did the pillow that came in last time, and this is a hanging gather. Oh, it's very nice, isn't it? Can't wait to start this. And, of course, it comes with a kit uh, with everything in it. Everything you need to have fun. And then I also am a member of the Erica Michaels All About Berries Club again from Dying to Stitch in Virginia Beach. And this is the Give More, a Quaker Wisdom Berry. And you see, I should have taken everything out of the package because now you're gonna get a big fat glare. No, there's too much in this bin. So when I start stitching things, I'll take it out of the package and I'll show you closer. But here it is, Erica Michaels. Erica Michaels, again, can do no wrong. So wonderful. What's this? Ooh. Uh, while I was gone, I have things in here from summer school at the Attic Needleworks because I did not go to summer school. I just wasn't comfortable with traveling in a global pandemic, especially not going around people who are mature and um, who might have comorbidities, especially yeah, going through cancer treatment. So I did not travel to that. I also did not travel to um, Wisconsin? No, Ohio. Okay, somewhere right there in the middle of the United States. Um, Susan Greening Davis has a funny name, the retreat. Tick tock, tick tock. I don't, I don't remember the name of it. It's Kenoshina, I don't know, Skaskachewan. I don't know what the name of it was, but I didn't go to that one either. And then um, the Dying to Stitch Retreat. That one was canceled. Uh, Virginia Beach, that's three. Uh, of course, Celebration of Needlework, didn't fit to go to that. And um, there was one more. So it was like five, like five retreats worth of stuff. So, you know, you don't get your money back, you just get the projects. And what do I need? A hole in the head or another project? No. So <laughs> I really just want to go to retreats because I want to be around stitchy people. Stitchy friends. So, and you know, get fun stuff. Cause I normally just stitch my own thing at retreats anyways. So this obviously is from a retreat. I don't know which one, but here it is. It is Rebecca Stewart and Needlework F3. Okay. It has a little bag. It has the, I uh, need the flosses in here and the pattern and a beautiful Dupiani silk to put it together. So, um, That'll be fun. This is something I might actually work in pink because that's kind of a cool color pink. It's kind of it's kind of a dusty, nice antique pink. It's not like you know Pepto Bismol pink. Um, yeah. And then, oh, 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 the Scarlet House. Okay, they can do no wrong. I love them. Okay, so the Scarlet House. Look at look at this. These ladies are so creative, and they're really nice, which. Maybe because they work for churches, because they're really great people. So um, there you go, the Scarlet House. We are the sampler makers. Oh yes, we are, aren't we? Yes. So this is like a whole. Here's the floss. This is the floss card. Look, look at these ladies. Ah, I love them. Look at that. Maybe it was like against the law to smile in old pictures, because everybody's very and. Maybe they did it because it took so long to take the picture or something. I don't know. Like, they didn't like their teeth. Maybe they had bad teeth. I don't know why people didn't smile. But they're touching, and they look like this chain gang of people. It's the sound of the man working. Okay. Anyway, so that's really cool. And it, this is a, uh, what are these things called? The board things. Um, uh, yeah. 
So everything you need for this is in there for this really, for really wonderful, uh, of course, listen, if you watch me, then clearly you watch other people who do samplers, and uh, I'm sure Brendan the Serial Starter and uh, all the other people who probably were going to go to summer school have, have shown you this stuff already. For me, it's the first time I've seen it because I have not been watching those people. <laughs> Didn't want to ruin the surprise. So, very cool. You will see these when I actually start these. <laughs> Here's the thing. Now that I've shown them to you, if I never start them or if I start them a really long time from now, you're going to be like, hey, you showed that to us last year. Wait, what planet are you on? How long does it take you to stitch things anyways? Okay, a really long time. I am a super slow stitcher. As you can see from something that I've been working on for like a year. So there you go. You would think I did like one stitch a day. No. Uh, okay, what is this? Samplers remembered uh, from summer school. Isabella Ingalls comes to this really great bag. I like getting these bags. That's kind of cool. It's like the waterproof, you know, zip and go. Uh, none of my bags have, oh, it's my, it's my fabric for making my bags because I'm about as addicted to fabric as I am to cross stitching. Um, yeah, I don't put zippers. I use Velcro closures, but this is kind of cool. If you're going to have a zipper, I like these. Ooh, now that's cool. Um, I love me a sampler. So here we go, Isabella Ingalls. Yes, very nice. Way to go, samplers remembered. That's a good one. And I just, I, I love alphabets. People are split on that camp. Some people love alphabets, me. And some people just don't. Some people go so far as to remove alphabets from the things that they stitch. Huh, huh, I've never stitched anything. I, I, I love me a good alphabet. I don't know, something about the written word is really great. Just really, really great. Oh, look at this, how cute. Oh, I guess you can make a little pillow out of part of the motifs of the sampler and it comes with all the floss and stuff. That's really, really great. Ooh, okay, I really like the color of that linen. Look at that. Mmm, <gasps> that is very, it's like a chestnut-y kind of, oh, it's nice. Okay, so that's that one. That's from summer school. Oh, this one's all tied together. This one is Sarah Burgess, 1828. Needlework Press. Again, Needlework Press. The same wonderful ladies. Look at that. You know, I'm thinking her house must just be a museum. Like, so fantastic. Because all these reprodu reproductions that Needlework Press does, I mean, if they, if they own all these antique samplers, wow. Wow, right? Okay. Um, oh, and what does a bird symbolize? Oh, I love that. Look, a little wool pin keep. It's a thing that you can make a little wool pin keep. Okay, yes, I'm going to make him because he's cute. And this is the fabric for Sarah. Oh, I love this. Oh, look at that. Oh, my gosh. It's like a, like a green, ivy, brownie, wonderful color. I, I want everything I own to be this color. Like that is good. That's a good color. Yep. Sometimes colors just make you feel really good. Like usually it's blue, black, you know, wear black, it's slimming. So that, that's a great color. It can't decide if it wants to be gray or green or maybe brown. It's wonderful. Yeah. The gray greeny color. Mm -hmm. And it's a sampler. So two for that's a win-win situation. Okay. Oh, another one that's in a, like a, oh, it's in a whole container. Let's see. Ooh, my lady's needle. Hey, this is what the ruler is for. <laughs> uh, the attic rules. Get it? Get it? It's a ruler. Mystery solved. Okay, I bet every single person out there, sorry, my nose running. Do I have tissue? Do I have tissue? Yes, I do. Pardon me. Didn't need to see that, but allergies, love nature. Um, yeah, everyone out there is like, I know what that rule is for. Just wait, Angel, just wait, just wait. Here it comes, here it comes, just wait. I know, ha, 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 I know something you don't know. There it is. That's really cool. That is very cool and witty. So I bet there's more than that in here. Oh, you know it. You know it. So it's the attic rules. 
That goes with the ruler we just saw. And dun dun dun. Evelyn Perkins, 1909, Milady's Needle. Oh, get out. Do you see those cute little birdie, butterfly, dragonfly looking things in the middle? Oh, those are cute. And then the pups. Look at the puppers. Okay, that's a great sampler. There you go. Now you can see it. That is it. Evelyn, you did a fantastic job. You rocked it. Okay, that's really great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna have a wall full of samplers. And, ooh, again, that's a really good color. Oh yeah, that is a good color. Does it look familiar? Huh? Does it look familiar? I mean, <laughs> clearly I like that color. Yeah, that's, that's great. Oh, look at that. It's like Christmas. It's like Christmas. This is great. Okay, and it all comes in this wonderful little, you know me, I love a good container. Keep it contained, ladies. Okay. <gasps> That's it. What else? Oh, no, here's something else. Uh, Rebecca Stewart, okay, by Needle Made Designs. Here's this one. Ooh, that's very cool. I will definitely be making that. Ooh, on the back there's all kinds of things in it. Look at that. It opens up, you put things in it, and along the edge has some sang. Okay, yeah, that's, that's really nice. Very nice, okay. Again, Rebecca Stewart, Needle Made Designs. Oh, that was the Rebecca Stewart. Okay, here's the difference. Okay, wait a minute. This says, I wonder if that's a typo if it's supposed to be that way. I don't even know. Yummy. Okay, Rebecca Stewart with a D. Okay, this is Rebecca Stewart with a T. Rebecca Stewart with a T, but on the back it says Rebecca, Rebecca Stewart with a D. There's a typo. There's a typo right there. Okay, I'm guessing because both of these say, it says Stewart everywhere else. And even on, on the sampler itself, it says Stewart with a D. Okay, typo! If you ever need something edited, send it to me. I have yet in my lifetime to read a book without finding mistakes. <laughs> Never. Textbooks, Holy Bible, I don't care what it is. I find editing mistakes, misspellings, uh, grammar, wh whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Because when, as I'm reading along, to me, they jump off the page like fireworks. Like, I, I can't help but see it. Like that, I can't help but see that, right? So, um, but it is really beautiful. And it's on that blue, it looks at, from the picture like it's on this light blue um, fabric. That's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Rebecca, nice, very, very nice. Now, it looks also looks in the picture, although we all know as stitchers that the picture is never really what it looks like because printing, computers, you know, cameras, I mean, you can't get a really accurate picture of something that's colors until you actually just see it with your own eyes. And I have, sometimes I think maybe people's perceptions of colors are a little bit different as well. Like, have you ever met someone from Germany, perhaps, that has uh, the, the purpley tinted hair, which looks fantastic on them? Um, but sometimes their uh, perception of colors are different. Like, what is popular there? I used to live there, so that's why I'm using that as an example. Um, living there, the colors that were popular that people chose for their hair color or for their clothing and stuff was people a lot of times chose things that were kind of similar, but I think the perception of it is different than what is chosen in other words. Like when I lived in Spain, very different color choices and not only cultural. I think some of it clearly is cultural, but also I believe just human beings have a different perception of it. Anywho, side note. Okay, yeah, so it looks like it's probably more, it looks from here like it's like hot pinky kind of colors. I think I would change that. Guess what? I have a whole bunch of red. Ah, so this might become a red sampler-ish. Anyways, love you, Rebecca. Oh yeah, coral, it's a coral colors. Yeah, you know, I'm not really a, a beachy kind of gal. 
Um, so I might change that. But I would, I'll pull them, see, do a floss toss, see what it's like. But you know, when Rebecca um, stitched it, it's her art. And her art is beautiful for what it is. When I stitch it, it'll be my art. And it'll be beautiful for when I make it. Okay, good. Um, the Scarlet House, oh, Isabella Jackson, 1829. Oh, wow, that is luscious. That is like Thanksgiving luscious right there. Look at that, those colors. Should I hold it closer? Just, you know, scream out if you need me to hold it closer because, you know, I'm listening. <laughs> oh, goodness. Isabella Jackson, nice, very, very nice. The Scarlet House, they just do such fantastic things. And, oh, is he on there? Look at this little itty bitty doggy. Cute. Okay, yes, my chair squeaks, I can't help it. That's, it's from Ikea, that's what it is. Um, five times blessed, a traveling stitch box. I think maybe I have a box over there, which I haven't opened. Oh, hold on, I might have missed something in my haul then. Oh, there's this. I'm sure this goes with something. Very cool. Very, very cool. And this. This must have been what my mom was oogling about when she opened it. She's like, oh, there's something with a ship and it's fantastic. I'm like, stop talking. I don't want to hear. Oh. Look at that! There are tall ships, there are sm and small ships, but the best ships are friendships. That is so cute. Okay, okay, this wins the cute award for the year. Yep, 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 yep. Wow. Okay, so everything you need is in there. Really neat. I wonder if this goes with it. I don't know. Not sure. Um, I'll see when I <laughs> when I start to do it. Wow. Okay. Is that gray haul or what? That's a lot of really good haul. Um, also, ooh, as if that wasn't enough. If you're stitching, keep stitching, keep stitching. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't look up. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here yet. Okay. Don't lose count. Then you'll end up like me. Ha. So, <clears throat> the Washington, D.C. Uh, Embroiderers Guild had a book sale. I'm a member of the Washington DC uh, Embroiderers Guild, also of the Southern Maine chapter of the EGA. And I have not joined one in Houston. I don't know, maybe if there is one or not. I'll have to look at that. But they were having a book sale. And of course, I find it difficult to find good books on hand embroidery. So it seems like everything's already been written. It's all old and it's hard to find. So. There were, I bought a few because they weren't a lot of money um, and they were worth it. So this one I think is really cool. I've been reading this one currently. Embroidery motifs from um, old Dutch samplers. Oh yeah. I'm liking everything in this book. And when I was reading, I, I opened it up to this page and I thought, look at that. Does that remind you of something? Because it reminds me of something. That very much Reminds me of Mary Freer, 1808. I know Mary Freer is not a Dutch sampler. Um, you know, she could be, you don't know. Um, where is it? It's at the bottom, of course. Look, there's Mary Freer. Oh, let me hold up one and then the other. How am I gonna do this? Look at that. I mean, they're, I mean, they're not the same thing, clearly. But aren't they similar? It's kind of cool, huh? Yeah, both have a ship and, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of neat. So I just saw that and it's a whole bunch of, literally it's like samplers and motifs and it explains what, uh, what the motifs uh, stand for and I, I really enjoy books that talk about what motifs stand for so that when I'm designing samplers I can kind of put themes together and, and you know, it's like really great places to start. And then I also bought uh, this a book, Embroider Now. Um, what is this? Hetsy Van Wick. So this person, I'm, I'm, I'm not Dutch or anything, but this one, uh, you know, I'm not gonna do a page turn, but. And, oh, and here was a, little, was a little special thing, like someone started something. 
<laughs> it's like a gift in here. I don't know what they started to do. Oh, look. Looks like they started to do that, whatever that is, on here. Neat. Very, very neat. I, I always enjoy learning new stitches. So, and I really like to be able to take stitches and stitch variety and and incorporate it into a, a cross stitch piece. So that that's kind of neat. Good reference book. The next one is Samplers and Tapestry Embroideries. Check that out. By Marcus Hewish. These are all, I don't, all these books I'm assuming are out of print. You can't get them anymore, but really nice. It talks about uh, embroideries and tapestries, um, the history of them. Uh, primarily, there's a lot of English references here because it's obviously English needlework, but it goes over, you know, the basic stuff you know about samplers, reinforces that, gives you a little bit more tidbits. Ooh, look, Scottish motifs. Oh! Gotta love a good Scottish sampler. Um, neat, 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 neat. So, I like that. Oh, look at that. Now, of course, it's black and white, so nothing's in color in this one. And it talks about signatures, and it talks about poetry that it, that is uh, resident inside samplers, uh, motifs, things like that. So it's a really, really great reference book. They have, this is a, a book from the Embroiderers Guild of America, and Elegance from the Past. So this is, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a how-to um, book. Now, a lot of these, as you can see, are very kind of, uh, kind of meditative stitches. And I know that Gary Parr was doing a whole series about meditative stitches. So this, these look like, uh, would be really good for that. So maybe, maybe I'll design a meditative stitch sampler. I don't know. If you're interested in it, let me know. Tell me in the comments. Okay. So, and then the piece de resistance is Louisa, I think it was Pessel, 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 uh, Historical Designs for Embroidery, Linen, and Cross Stitch. This book I hear is uh, rather rare and uh, it's not much of a book uh, going through it. And what's in it is like hand done, literally graph paper with pencil, like, <laughs> um, and it, it talks about uh, what year things are from and, per, and where they might be from, if they're English or Scottish, if they're from some, you know, the 17th century, if they're from the 1800s, um, if they're from a particular collection where, you know, things like that. So not a whole lot of words as in writing. Everything is in the pages that's here, but... It's still a good kind of an outline source, I think, uh, overall source for things. I mean, really, the only writing is really the forward. But that one is going to be very neat. I uh, haven't decided really what, haven't really dug into it yet because I, I'm working on the, the Dutch ones now. But, but this is very cool. So thank you to everyone at the Washington, D.C. EGA. It's been wonderful to get those books and dive into it. Okay, I did um, some designing since I've been keeping things in that little book that I've been showing. I keep pointing over there like you know what I'm pointing at, but there's a little book that I have that's my cross-stitch journal. And I just picked one. I mean, there's all kinds of project journals. There's a bazillion and one half of them out there. You could create one of your own. But I was looking for one because I'm lazy that's already made. So I designed one. <laughs> Here we go. The cross-stitch journal by The Elegant Thread. And it literally is just a journal, and inside are pages for you to keep your stitching projects. This is still in, let's call it beta, right? This is the prototype. I am going to offer at market spiral bound ones that are all in one for you to buy and use as a cross stitch journal. But I'm also going to offer a, a kit type. A scenario where it's if you want to put it in I have mine in right here three ring binders and I use a sleeve the plastic sleeve do I have one and what I do is I have the project page I keep the information and then I keep the actual pattern itself in the sleeve so that pardon, <coughs> I told you allergies um, 
And so if I want to go back and see, I'm, you know, when I'm reading about my project, behind it will also be the project, like the information for the project. If there's any threads left over, if the pattern will fit in there, those kinds of things. And then if I want to share it with somebody, um, it's easier to share the stash. Ah, so if you're interested, I haven't printed all of these up yet. I don't quite know how many to get. So if you're interested in a cross stitch journal, let me know in the comments, drop me a line. I'll put my email address below. And if I can get an idea of pre-orders, then I'll go ahead and, and order the books up. So they'll generally run 20 bucks ish, um, depending on how many pages, how thick that I make the book. So yeah, and they're really, it's on cardstock. They're nice, thick, very, really thick, thick pages that are gonna, that will last. So heirloom quality. Let me know, cross stitch journal, if you're interested, taking pre-orders now. Okay, before we go, one more thing. Let's talk about the latest um, project bag set that I posted. So I wanted something fun. We all need a little bit of fun right now in our lives. So, because I love my puppy, I'm a dog mom. I did a puppy set. So I made this wonderful closure, uh, the heart with the paw print, because it's lined in hearts and paw prints. I know, that's cute. Okay, um, so it has the matching notions bag. Let's see, Ooh, everything's sticking together. Matching notions bag, comes with the scissors, of course. And scissor fob and the charm has a heart with a paw print. Heart with a paw print. Oh, let me do this one. And the needle minders. Paw print. The little bronze paw print. Let's stick it on here. Put it right over here. Boop. Okay. There. There's my puppy set. Oops. I call it puppy love. How cute. Puppy love. So that one is the only one of that. That one uh, is one of a kind. Only made one. And if no one wants it, I'll use it because I love my puppers. And then I have, oh goodness, where is it? Oh, I do have three sets that I have not posted yet. I'll give you a preview of just one. Here they are. So. Let's do the fun one. Here we go. My London gal set. So here she is, my London gal. It is directional. So Ta -da. this closure actually used to be an old shoe buckle. So that's very cool. It's a shoe buckle. And then I found a bead that I liked and I kind of made this little closure for it. And then it's lined and Wonderful red and white polka dots. I have one that's lined in blue and white polka dots. Then we have a notions bag lined in black polka dots. <laughs> this is the floss jewelry. Floss buddy. Uh, everybody needs jewelry for their floss, just saying. So there you go, floss jewelry. This great little foam booth. And this is the needle minder. It is actual silver. Real artisan silver, because if you look, where is it? This little gal here has a heart on her shirt, so bing bing. Okay, and scissors and a scissor fob, and look at this little guy. It's a double decker bus. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So what fun is that? Okay, Ooh. stick it all together. That's just one of them. I have three of the London Gal. They're going to be posted this week. Oh, I forgot, here's the Floss Joey as well on that one. So these are all three of them are six pieces. Two of them have Floss Jewelry and one of them has a little Scrappy. And little Scrappies are so much fun. It is just that little Scrappy. From this kit, from you know, from the pattern, from things that are left over, I kind of make something wonderful. And the little scrappy is a book that's a little bit bigger than a needle book, but smaller than like one of those big floss buddy things. So you can either keep needles in it, 
or you could keep your floss in it, like the open floss or your orts or something like that. So I call it a, uh, a little scrappy. Two will have uh, floss jewelry and one will have a, a little scrappy. And there are three that are coming out this week. So, all right. Of course, by the time you see this, it'll probably be, this week will be past, but all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you for for hanging out with me for however long we've been online. Oh gosh, 40 minutes. Ah, it's gonna take me a day and a half to upload this. So find your zen, find your chi, and have a really, really great afternoon, um, evening, rest of the week, weekend. Uh, smile, keep stitching, and uh, just know I'm thinking about you, and I appreciate you stopping by, and we'll talk soon. Bye.